What's good, YouTube? It is your boy, Big Cool, coming to you from Colossal Sports TV. And I am back with another video. Canelo Alvarez is the new unified middleweight champion of the world. He defeated Daniel Jacobs via a close unanimous decision to claim that IBF middleweight title to go along with his WBC and WBA and Ream Magazine middleweight titles. Uh, I didn't see the whole fight because I was covering um, the Beer to Beef um, Hot Rod um, card. Uh, as you all know, I'm the lead journalist for 3 kingsboxingcom so I had to do my duties. But I did catch the fifth round on, and from what I'm seeing, it was a close fight. From, five, from round 5 to 12, it was a close fight. But the people who I work with at 3kingsboxing.com and just... Um, that I built relationships uh, with throughout the years, who I have a high respect and regard for their boxing um, knowledge and their ability to, you know, um, score and judge a fight. They say that Canelo, you know, clearly won the first five or six rounds. Um, so I'm a, you know, take that word, take their word for it um, until I go back later on the night, early in the morning, to watch the whole fight um, in its entirety but i wanted to give my thoughts on what i seen and props to canelo alvarez i picked daniel jacobs to win this fight via a split decision obviously i was wrong um it was an entertaining fight but clearly um canelo alvarez um surprised the hell out of daniel jacobs with his hand speed and i don't know how surprising that would be we all know that he has respectable hand speed um, but maybe Jacobs didn't think it would be that effective, which it was. Uh, and like I said in the breakdown prediction video, um, Alvarez is a phenomenal fighter. His uh, ability to slip and roll shots to avoid damage and make you pay um, is something that has, you know, came into play again in this fight. Daniel Jacobs, we all know, gets wild. He squares himself up. It looked like he'd be swimming in there sometime. And, you know, that's what he did. Even in some of the parts, you know, in the half of, second half of the fight that I seen, he was doing that. He was swinging and missing, swinging and missing, being overly aggressive. You know, he seemed to have his most success when he switched to the southpaw stance. Um, He landed a nice left hand, um, a hard left hand, and I think round eight or nine that got the attention of Canelo, but he didn't sit down on the punch. He didn't turn it over um, like you would have liked him to um, would have liked him to do. Um, but you know, Canelo Alvarez is a great fighter. You know, what I'm saying Daniel Jacobs is a very good fighter. Uh, but Canelo Alvarez has been here plenty of times. You know, he's been in these mega fights, super fights, plenty of times. So the moment. Uh, it's really, really never too big for him, um, and he did what he was supposed to do. Uh, at the end of the the, the night, two judges sc um, scored a seven five for him. The other judge scored an eight four, and that seems correct. Eight four seven five, um, because Daniel Jacobs, to his credit, he did close the gap significantly um, down the stretch. He was able to land some, you know, very good body shots. Um, as Canelo Alvarez started to uh, slow down and get tired. Um, and that's a credit to Daniel Jacobs for applying pressure intelligently um, in the second half of the fight, you know, going down to the body. Um, and you can see the significant size uh, difference, um, disparity between the two. It looked like Daniel Jacobs was fighting damn middleweight and he was a light heavyweight. She pretty much, yeah, or yeah, that's how it looked. You know, even though reportedly he rehydrated up to 173, Jacobs did, and Canelo um, rehydrated up to 169. The, you know, significant size differential uh, was definitely on display. But that didn't deter um, Canelo Alvarez, who's used to fighting bigger guys. Gennady Golovkin bigger. Um, you know, you can make an argument that uh, James Kirkland, was bigger because we all know that Alvarez started his career at 147. Um, shit, he might have started a lower than that. You know, he's a big boy, but naturally bigger these guys are. You know, we see what he did against Rocky Fielding, although he isn't 
a great fighter. He still is significantly bigger, taller, um, you know, fighter fighting at 168. But look, man, the rifle winner won this fight. Uh, it was an entertaining um, bout. I think that Jacobs showed himself in a good account in the second half of the fight. Um, but, you know, he really dropped the ball. Uh, he should have came out, like I said, utilizing that jab, keeping the fight in the middle of the ring, being patient, allowing um, himself to get into the flow of things. And ex instead, you know, he came out, you know, trying to be o ultra aggressive and, you know, look foolish. You know, we know that it's not easy to hit Canelo, so you're going to have to slowly get yourself um, in the floor of things against him. Use that jab, you know, keep it in the center of the ring, uh, shoot it to the body, shoot it to the head, throw your combinations, and, you know, go to the body, go to the body, and eventually you'll wear him down. And that is what uh, he did later on in the fight. And you see Canelo took his foot off the gas, um, for two or three of those, um, you know, second half rounds, which allowed Daniel Jacobs to get himself back into the fight. But, you know, you live and you learn. Um, I don't know if it'll be a rematch between these two because it was a competitive fight. Um, I know Gennady Golovkin was in attendance. I know that Demetrius Andrade, uh, who will be fighting, I think, June 29th or July 29th at uh, Dunkin' Donuts Center in Rhode Island, um, is the WBO middleweight champion. So, that's the fight that, you know, Canelo Alvarez most likely will be looking forward to happen, you know, make it happen because the winner of that fight will become the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. And I don't know if he wanna risk going through with a rubber match with Gennady Golovkin when you got Demetrius Andre um in that WBO title right there within reach for you to um, you know, snatch and make history. So we shall see, but props to Canelo Alvarez for unifying the WBA, WBC, and IBF middleweight titles um, and continuing his impressive streak and, you know, showcasing himself again as one of the top five pound for pound um, fighters in the sport today. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you drop those comments in the comment section down below. Give me your thoughts on this. If you enjoy the content throughout the channel, please hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on and get notified every time I upload content. Shout out to the movement and everybody that is moving with us. Be sure to check out 3kingsboxing.com for your latest and greatest updated, unfiltered, and unbiased boxing news and information reported the way it should be. Until next time, I am out. Peace.